Hi, welcome to Ask the Chiropractor. I'm Dr. Corey Rodnick in Midland, Michigan. This is Dr. Tony Rodnick. It's a pleasure also to be in Midland, here. Michigan. Pleasure and an and honor. Sometimes in Clare. And Dr. Tamara Slusher. Hi, who good morning. Also is in Clare, Michigan. And today we're going to talk about chiropractic philosophy, which we may leak into science and art, but mostly philosophy. And then we're going to talk about uh, summer activities, summer fun. And then we're going to talk about golf in particular with an expert. <laughs> so uh, let's start off. Chiropractic philosophy, one of my favorite topics. We talk about universal intelligence. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have, who wants to talk about it? Well, one of the things that we mention to people is, uh, you know, we talk to them about um, that you have this inborn intelligence inside your body that you don't have control over. It has its own control. Um, I use the example if you cut your finger that it eventually will heal but it depends on how deep the cut is as to whether or not there's outside elements that are needed for it. But we say the power that made the body heals the body. And when we say this, a lot of people ask the question, well, what does that mean in, in relative terms? And basically what we're saying is, is that we all have this power inside our body that will heal us and do the things it needs to do, but sometimes there are interferences that get in the way. And that's how we bring up about subluxation and what we do with chiropractic. I like to start back at the beginning. I start with the two cells, or two half cells, that get fertilized and become a, an embryo. And they divide and they divide and they divide. And then they start differentiating. And the first thing to differentiate is the nervous system. There's a primitive streak. And then that starts, starts running and telling all the other cells what to do. You over there, you're a heart cell, become a heart cell. You're a liver cell, become a liver cell. And that power that created the body and determined what cells became what and differentiated them into from two little cells to a whole human being, that power is still there to make corrections and heal the body if there's some interference. We remove the interference and the body's ability is restored to function more optimally. It's a huge job. You have 75 trillion cells all held together by this emanating force we like to call innate intelligence. And our job is to make sure there's no interference with that system. That's what we do. So it's not just for back pain? No, it has nothing to do with back pain. Although we're great at back pain, but it had nothing to do with that. That came around in the 70s. Uh, That's how people are misled, is they think that all we deal with is pain. Yeah, the first patient was a deaf man. He had bent over and 17 years earlier, heard a pop in his neck and been deaf ever since. And then when Dr. D.D. Palmer examined him and felt a bone out of place in his neck, it convinced him to get adjusted or to allow him to put the bone back. He got his herring back. It wasn't just for backaches from the beginning. Yeah, that was the, uh, the again, the American Medical Association was uh, trying to annihilate us. And so in the... To pigeonhole us. The pigeonhole us in the 70s. And uh, they wanted to... Uh, what, what they did is they gave us that code for back pain and neck pain. So then the chiropractors uh, went out and advertised the daylights out of it because the insurance companies were paying for back pain diagnosis or ne and later neck pain diagnosis. So it started off as back pain. And so everyone in publicly thinks it's for back pain and neck pain, which it really has nothing to do with chiropractic, other than we're great at it anyway. But other than that, kind of silly. So universal intelligence, let's talk about that. It's kind of like the God force that runs through the whole universe and keeps the planets in line and you know there's science here that there's a there's a force that's keeping everything in line just like a watch and you know it's like if you found a watch you say oh look at that it's it's turning and it's it looks intricate and you know it's coincidence well can't be coincidence it's too like the universe is way more than a watch so obviously there's something controlling and regulating that whole system. We call it in chiropractic universal intelligence. And again, that's like God. If you believe in God, it's the God force. Now, God might be more than just that. Here we're just talking about how the universe is being held together. But I think God is even more than that. But for our practical purposes right now, let's say God is running this thing. We call it universal intelligence. And then 
you guys described innate intelligence, which is that same system only in people. So we had it broken down into uh, innate intelligence for human beings and people and things like that, and, and that's what we work with. So it, this is like the best subject in the world because this is like what we do totally. And uh, so this innate intelligence, which is flowing through that you said we have really no control over it, it's doing its thing. It works at 100%. It's functioning at 100% unless it's interfered with. Also, if there's limitations of matter, if you're not giving it the proper nutrition, proper, proper exercise, proper, if you don't take care of your body, then that might also cause interference with the innate ability to function at an optimal. It is. So how we find and locate this, there's many ways of doing it. It can actually be measured, just like uh, years ago, uh, D.D. Palmer has a son. He discovered chiropractic, which we just talked about. But his son, B.J. Palmer, his thinking was, we need to like develop this and figure it out and make it so it's uh, more scientific, added to the philosophy. So how he did that, he had... Uh, I can't even say the word, the uh, neuro and typograph. That's, it was a really long word. I just yeah. chopped off about 80% of it. Um, <laughs> and, and he would hook you up to that. And he would know when the innate thought flashes. Is anyone out there, maybe if you can think of a time when you just had this flash thought and it was like maybe you're thinking about somebody and then the phone rings and it's them. Is that coincidence or... Is it part of the universal intelligence where you're hooked up to that person, you know they're calling you, or you know, or, or you know it's going to rain that day, even though it's beautiful out, you didn't check with the weather, but you bring your umbrella anyway, and then it does rain that day. So things like that. Um, so I'm sure most of us have experienced that. Well, th that's kind of how this is working. So, so the body's always trying to keep everything it's called homeostasis where just like at your uh, in, in your house you know if you set it let's say for 72 so if it gets hot the heat kicks on and you know, I mean if it gets cold out the heat kicks on brings it back to homeostasis same thing the other way if it starts getting cold the heat kicks on brings it back to homeostasis 72 degrees so you have all these different systems in your body hundreds and thousands of things going on tens of thousands of things going on. And that's exactly how my study was, by the way, for the liver. So first it was thousands of things, then it was ten thousands of things, and it kept getting more and more. Originally we could actually memorize the functions of the liver. There were only a few, and then a few years, a year later it was like thousands. Mm -hmm. and anyway, so uh, as we discover, so all these reactions are going on innately without us knowing about it. Uh, some examples, like your body has to grow skin, right? You're constantly shedding skin. We, we shed enough skin in a lifetime to fill up a room, a 12 by 8 room filled with skin. That's how much skin we're shedding. In fact, that's why you're not supposed to breathe in uh, when you vacuum because that skin is getting sucked up into the, and they have flesh-eating bacteria that eats the skin. I and mean, that's its job. So you don't want to breathe that into your lungs because then you have to fight that off. It lowers your resistance. So anyway, that's what that's all about. And so the skin on your hand, some of it grows faster than others. The skin on your lip, you'll notice your lip grows faster than the back of your hand. You know, if you bite your lip, it's gone in about three days. Back of your hand might be weeks compared to the stomach lining, your stomach lining. Every 10 minutes, you get a brand new stomach lining. So in 10 minutes, it regrows. As long as there's no interference. As long as there's no interference. And if there's interference, it's not growing as quickly as it should. That's what we call an ulcer. Correct. And what if it grows too much? And then we call it a tumor. Tumor, which means too many cells. Too many cells. Who's in charge of that? This innate wisdom. And where does it lo where is it located? That's the secret. Where is this godlike substance? So we know, we don't know 
I mean, it comes from out here. So the brain is a transmitting and receiving set. So it's, it's getting signals from the ether, God, whatever, and it comes down into the brain and down the cord and it travels. And then coming back up, it gives signals saying, here's what's happened. And then you get more signals back and forth. So those thought flashes I was saying, that comes from the brain being also a receiving set, just like a radio. And it's picking up this information. Very cool, right? This is so cool. And then it, it's traveling down the cord. And the instruments now that we're using are showing us more and more information. Uh, the new, uh, the, it's the MRI, but they have a new MRI. It actually, you can see the brain pumping the cerebral spinal fluid. Oh, and, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's pumping it. And, and you can see when it's misaligned right up here that it stops pumping. That means your spinal cord is not getting bathed. And then you get adjusted and you can see that actually start pumping. Big time research by uh, Dr. Scott out in uh, New York. And uh, very cool stuff. Very upper cervical kind of, you know, incredible. Anyway, so you see this thing pumping and it's traveling back and forth, uh, the cerebral spinal fluid bathing it. So you can see that it's actually a pumping action. It works with the sacrum, the lower back, and this, and, and this the atlas. Anyway, so here it is coming back and forth. And it's, uh, again, it corrects things on its own. Like we're talking about the stomach. You know, every 10 minutes you need a new stomach. And if it delays it, you get an ulcer. Does the whole stomach become an ulcer? No, only the part where it's getting signals not to regrow itself fast enough. So you have a whole stomach, and why is there an ulcer in one spot? So, you know, medically we look at it, not, I'm not a medical doctor, but medically it's looked at as, you know, that the stomach has too much acid. Now, decreasing the acid would help decrease the amount of burning of that spot. But why wouldn't the whole stomach have that is the big question. So, you know, we look at it, well, it's a nerve supply problem, not a lack of stomach acids or too much stomach acids. Not that you can't have too much stomach acids. And what would cause that? Again, wrong signals, mm -hmm. wrong information. Because the brain gets, relies on the information it gets from the body before it regulates things. It regulates temperature, like you were saying, blood pressure, the amount of electrolytes or, or ions or sodium and calcium or potassium in the blood. It's, it's always regulating by, based on the information it receives from the body. You know, a great example of that is the kidneys. I love the kidney exp you know, f understanding of this. So your kidneys are filtering your bloodstream right now. It's taking out things that it, it thinks that the body doesn't require. It's filtering those out and it's leaving in the things that your body does require, hopefully. And uh, that if it's all working right. So here it gets confused a little bit, let's say. Or let's say it needs more water. Let's use that one. So it needs more water because it's it's running a little low, and it's a filter system, so it requires water. So I'm thirsty. So what happened is my kidney sends a signal up to my brain that it needs more water. So the brain sends out a hormone that makes my mouth dry. I'm dry. I'm thirsty. So I reach over and take my hidden glass of water. Mm. I, I love the way you snuck in a chance to get your water dry. Yes, it was perfect, right? <laughs> and and then the water goes down and the kidney says, hey, perfect, we got enough water. So it sends a signal up to the brain. The brain stops that hormone from being released and your mouth's not dry. Now let's say the signals are all screwed up. So first of all, the kidney might not send out the signal in time for your brain to recognize that the kidneys needed more water so it doesn't send out the dry mouth, so you're not drinking. Then all of a sudden, it does send it out. Bang! Major threshold. It sends it out. Now you're drinking, and you're drinking, and you're drinking, and your mouth's still dry, even though you just had a half a gallon of water. What's that? 
Well, the kidney has not sent the signal up to the brain yet that it got enough water, so it's still releasing that mouth dry hormone. So this is so interconnected, and you want everything functioning on time as it should be all the time. All these things means that there might be interference with that innate intelligence that's allowing the body to be in homeostasis, totally balanced, and that's what chiropractors do. We find and locate what's called a subluxation. Would you like to tell me about a subluxation? Well, basically, we're looking to see that the bones are all lining up in the spine the way they're supposed to and throughout the rest of the body so that the nerve flow can flow the way it's supposed to. It's like a garden hose. If you flatten out a garden hose, you're not going to get water. Therefore, you can't get the signal to the flowers to get the water that it needs. And that's the same way that our nerves function. So when we lose that because the bone rotates out of place and it, and we lose that signal and it's now been interfered with, depending on where that nerve is going, we should use the chart that's next to you. It shows that those particular spots where that nerve is going to affect. So, so it goes from the brain down the cord and then it goes out to every single different organ. So depending on where the interference is along the spine and along in the rest of the body is what area it's going to affect the most. But it can affect other areas as well. So there's a nerve that goes to the kidney. Yes. And there's a nerve that goes to the heart. Yes. And there's a nerve that goes to the spleen. Right. And there's a nerve that goes to the skin. And there's a nerve that goes to muscles, and each muscle has its nerves. And so those, like, you could have a pain from a muscle, and it's coming from the nerve being pinched. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not necessarily pain. You could have all sorts of different signals. Maybe you're sweating too much or not sweating enough, or maybe, you know, your skin is really itchy, or, you know, there's all sorts of different things that can happen. So. Only 10% of the nervous system is related to pain. The rest is related to the other symptoms, others uh, to running the internal organs, to um, move, moving the muscles. So pain is just a very small part, and it's one of the last things to come and one of the first things to go. How about these muscle twitches? Mm -hmm. Fis fisticulation. Is that what it's called? What does yeah. that mean? <laughs> muscle twitches. Muscle twitches. It's a big word. Mm -hmm. Fisticulation. So, now this is summertime. So, you guys, what kind of people do you see in the summertime as compared to in the wintertime? Like, for what reasons would somebody get subluxated? How would you get subluxated well, in the summer compared to being subluxated in the in other times? One of the biggest things that I want to bring up because I feel like it's not emphasized enough is that the posture is very much affected in the summertime because you know the fashion is to wear open-toed shoes to wear things that are not supporting your ankles and from not having the proper posture kind of like what you guys are wearing yeah yeah okay. so that's one of the reasons why you know with these kind of things that you know people start developing <clears throat> knee problems and hip issues and you know i mean it just it just kind of spirals out from there. So but it looks good. Yeah, I have to tell the young ones all the time how bad flip-flops really are for you. And, you know, they're just devastated because you can go out to the store and buy them for 50 cents and get whatever color you want to match, you know, whatever you're wearing. But, you know, when it comes down to it and we look at it years later, we see the damage it does to the arch in our foot. We understand how it's not supporting us properly. And, you know, when we're older, we start to feel the effects of that. So another thing, too, about the fact that um, Dr. Tony mentioned about, you know, how pain is only 10 percent of the signal. The thing is, is that we don't always feel it right away, too. It's years later from the damage that we do to ourselves. So it's summertime or it's, you know, late spring into early summertime and people are starting to wear not the proper shoe support. So that's one thing I wanted to bring up. Proper shoes. Yeah, proper shoes are important. For me, it's, you know, going around the house and the gardening and raking, which kills me, mm -hmm. and uh, doing the lawnmower thing. And, uh, and then there's all the outside fun activities, the softball, the boating, the water skiing, the jet skis. So if you've been creamed by, you know, 
snowboarding, uh, uh, not snowboarding, waterboarding. What do they call it? Kneeboarding. I don't do it. Yeah, but, but even if you're just sitting in a boat and you're hitting the waves and you're bumping. Getting crazy you know, with that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can mess up things, too. So, you know, it's just it's just proper to go get yourself checked just to make sure that everything is functioning the way it needs to and you don't have these interferences. That's the most important thing. Stretching before you go out and do activities. We mentioned in the last show, and it was very important about gardening and about the fact that you need to do the proper stretches beforehand. And we'll do the stretches at the end of the show, but we always show the stretches for a reason because you've got to keep things functioning the way they need to, especially with the muscles. So, and you know, we get a lot of sun. We get a lot of sun this time of year. So that's always important, making sure you have the proper hydration to go with those stretches, with those different activities. So. Kids will run themselves ragged. That's, this is the time of year when they do it. School's almost done. I don't know about here, but I know about Claire. Claire's almost done. When this comes out, it will <laughs> so, be done. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. So that's going to be devastating in itself, just having <laughs> the kids home. Well, uh, you know, kids are going to try to be active. Some of them like to lay around a little bit more and stuff. But you got to get out during the day and be active at least some of the time. So, yeah, so I important. usually say for uh, parents and the kids, about the third good fall, Make sure to get them checked. You don't want to go past that because then something's going on by mm -hmm. then. It starts making a pattern, then the thing starts going out more, the bones go out more, and they stay out now after getting whacked three times. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, one heavy-duty one, you should get checked, but about the third, about the third one, because they get racked and bashed, at, you know, in a day, you know, a million times. Mm -hmm. so, you know, the third good one. And then for the adults, I mean, you're sitting there at the benches, you're watching a softball game. You get up after and you go, something's not right. And then the pain goes away, like you said. It's only 10% of the nervous system. 90% is what we're worried about. It's even way more important. And uh, that's when you want to get checked. Another thing I've been telling people lately is uh, I have them pick their hands up, put them over their head. And if, if your thumbs line up, then you're balanced still. But... If you go like that and they don't, and they go like that, boy, do you have a neck problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a real good check for a, uh, to see if your atlas is out. And if mm -hmm. that's out, I mean, oh, my God. I mean, that affects everything. So just a simple check. Just put your hands straight up, go like that, and if they line up. See, right now mine are lining up. But I got yesterday. I got adjusted my hair. <laughs> so. You can also look at your clothes. Are your pants legs one higher than the other and things like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you always have to have it hemmed and, and fixed, or are you lined up? Yeah, that's our easy. Some people yeah. notice, too, on the wear on their shoes, and they notice they're dropping one foot more, dragging one foot more. You can hear it sometimes when you're walking, too. Click you clonk, scuff clonk, one. Clonk, yeah, you clonk. scuff one foot more across <laughs> the carpet than the other, that kind of thing. So, yeah. So you want to go click, 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 click. <laughs> so, so get into the car right here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. So, why are you here? Because my feet are going click, click, clunk, click, click, clunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a three-legged. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, great ways to check it. So, and how else can we get subluxated? Let's think about it. During the summertime, I get a lot of golfers, which we're going to talk about later. I get a lot of like when you're starting the lawnmower. If it's not working properly, they'll oh, yeah. reach out. And after they're pulling and they get tired, they're now using their back to do it, so they pull a rib out. If you slouch on a riding lawnmower and you use a riding lawnmower all day, that can really affect you. I had a gentleman come in yesterday that said he knew he must have been slouching because of how inflamed his back was. And it was so stiff. And just from a little bit of a slouch, being on a lawnmower for, you know, a rider for uh, two to four hours makes a huge difference. You know, there's a lot of a lot of country, so there's a lot of detailed mowing that they do out that way. So that makes a big difference. So, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're checking for. And I got the swimming activities where somebody jumped on me and blah, 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 or I hit my head into the wall. Those are all biggies. Right now, um, baseball is big, so that's another one. Yeah. Got clobbered by a guy who was trying to get to third base and... I was standing in front of it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or vice versa. I ran into the guy at third base, and yeah. I got clobbered him, and I'm all kinked now. So those are all the different things that happen in the summertime. And uh, so uh, what would you suggest out there? 
Before any activity, you should always warm up, stretch, and, and warm up before you start any activity. So we have uh, our expert golfer here, and I would like to bring him out. And uh, so we're going to take a short break, and we'll see you right after with our pro golf, Tom Slusher. I'm very excited. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Hi, and welcome back to Ask the Chiropractor. I'm Dr. Corey Rodnick. I'm here with our pro golf, uh, pro golfer here, Tom Slusher, and also Dr. Slusher. Hi. Hello. And so we were, we're, we're in summertime here, and we're looking at, uh, you know, how to prevent injuries. I mean, I just went golfing. I'm not anywhere at the level you are, and... Uh, Hell, I'm not even at the level you are. So, anyway. <laughs> I don't know about that, but okay. But, uh, but <laughs> golfing, and, and I, I was watching like different things, and, and I've taken courses on how to teach golfers how not to hurt their back. However, there's nothing like a pro golfer to get some answers to. So what do you think about, uh, well, one, we don't want to have back injuries, and we want people to take care of their spines better. So what's the most important thing you would think is, is you know, to prevent injury? Well, uh, <clears throat> number one is always to uh, warm up before you go play. Do, do some stretching, do some light swings before uh, going out and starting to try to hit those 300 yard drives, try to hit a few wedges and, and warm the body up. Uh, that's always really important to avoid injury. And uh, the second main thing is uh, when, when I teach new golfers, the, I, the first thing I teach them is to hold the club, and the second thing I teach them is the posture that they need to stand, uh, how they need to stand, because it's so important to, to stand uh, uh, in an athletic position with their back uh, fairly straight uh, to help avoid injury, because if they're bending their back all the time while they're twisting and torquing their body, it can lead to a lot of injuries that way too. See, bending and twisting, uh, you, you don't ever want to do bending and twisting at the same time. We, we have, at every place where you've worked, they've always has this one side that says, don't bend and twist. We've been putting that out forever. And, and I don't think everyone gets it yet. But Well, we still have to teach it in the back safe programs that we do all the time, the right, work safe programs. Sure. Because, yeah, people just don't pay attention to it. And sometimes you don't even think about it, and you just... Over time, gravity's pushing down on you, and you start leaning forward and leaning forward, and yeah, this is how we slump forward all the time. So, yeah. So on the warm-ups, I know, like for me, the injuries I see is like shoulders, sometimes elbows and stuff because they grip crazy. You know, it's metal. You're not going to actually put your indent into the club. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're squeezing too tight, or yeah, you know, shoulders and then back. And then neck, I would say those are the four biggies I see. and uh, Ribs, too. And ribs, I've sure. I've gotten quite a few lately with ribs because they're over-swinging. They're trying to correct their swing, either going back too far, coming down. Um, Tom mentions to me all the time tempo. If you over-swing and you go too fast, good way to throw your elbow right out there and then over-twist with those ribs. So, yeah, very important with posture. So what would you recommend then? Here I am, a golfer. What should I do? Like you said, do some stretches. Do uh, some stretches. Um, then uh, even probably, you know, and just as important is to work on your posture, how you're standing for your full swing. And you can do that by uh, standing in front of a mirror. You can kind of you take, uh, take your, your stance and kind of look in a mirror and see how it looks. Or you can have a... Um, a playing companion look at you, or you can you can see a, a golf professional to see you know make sure that your your posture is correct, and it it does it you know it, it helps your golf so swing. So would you be looking this from the side view or from the front view or what view? Because I'm thinking of a camera, you could just video, mm -hmm. you know, a you, quick picture. Usually, like from behind you while you're swinging, or you can do from if you're just looking in a mirror, you can uh, you can do from the front view too. I wouldn't recommend putting the camera in front of you, then trying, you know, then hitting the no, ball. No, it. it should be back. But, for yeah, put it behind you and uh, <laughs> keep a distance. And, uh, but but you can, you know, you can usually tell right away if, once you take your posture. You know, <laughs> you, you want to have, you you know, I, I compare the posture a lot of times to any others any other sport, similar to 
uh, a basketball player guarding someone or a fielder in baseball, you know, a, a shortstop or a second baseman, how they stand. It's very similar to the, the posture uh, for golf. And, and that your, your knees are flexed a little, uh, the waist on the balls of your feet, and your back is, is fairly straight, and it's real important. Um, the other thing I see as far as the posture a lot of times is a lot of people bury their, their, uh, their necks down, uh, bury their chin into their neck. Okay, and what they're, they've been told over the years, keep your head down, keep your head down, keep your head down. And uh, so what they do is they, they bury their, uh, their, their chin down and actually instead of helping them keep their head down, what it does is it impedes their ability to turn and swing. And that also can create injury. So where should that. their neck be? It should be, once you get your posture, your, I mean, your neck should pretty much be in, in line with your, your spine. It shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be this, you know, it shouldn't be a, a posture like so this. So your ears should be down. like right where your shoulders yep, just are. Like you're, yep, just like you're stand, you know, pretty much standing and then you take your posture, it should be, you know, bent, bent over to, you know, you have to be on, on an angle in order to grip the club and, and to uh, ground, you know, get to the, the ball on the ground, but you don't want your... You don't want to, you know, bend your neck weight out in order to. Uh, it's going to strain the neck, eye, and you so see people where should in. your shoulders be as far as in line with your hips? They should. Well, when we're talking alignment, as far as is as, as, uh, as uh, aiming to a target, you, you you basically want your your hips and shoulders on the same line. You want them to match. You don't want your hips pointing one way and your shoulders pointing opposite opposite direction. You want them basically right, right in From line. From a side view, should your shoulders be in front or straight lined up with your hips or? They, they should, well, they're gonna be in front. I mean, they're gonna be on an angle, okay? okay. So it's not, you're not straight up this way. You, want to, you have to be oh, on an okay. angle in order to, you know, to get the club to the ball on the ground. So would you so say it's like a, a 45 degree? And yeah, probably 30, 35. 30, okay. But the back is remaining flat, and that's what we have to remind people to do. Hmm. So, probably most, not only professionals, but most regular golfers uh, do it wrong. Yep. And then what do we see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it brings us a lot of people, don't get me wrong. Hot discs all the time, yeah. I remember the, uh, they had an uh, amateur competition in Florida. And one of my patients was in it, and he blows his back out after the second day, I think it was. But he was in first place. So he hops on a plane, comes down, I work on him, and he flew back and won that thing. That's incredible. That's yeah. A, that's a great story. It is a great story. <laughs> There's tons of those stories out yeah. there because golfers quietly see chiropractors mm -hmm. on a regular basis. So, yeah. yeah. Who's the... the uh, What's his name? Uh, Armstrong? No, that's the, the other guy. Um, he had a bad hip, and he was getting adjusted all through the tournaments in those little uh, huts they have. He had a chiropractor with him the whole time. Oh, okay. And he didn't tell anybody, though. It was like, well, if you have a chiropractor and no one else does, you have almost an unfair advantage. It's, you know. Yeah, the, well... That, that secret is kind of gone now. I mean, yeah, the, I know now. The, you know, as far as, you know, well, athletes as, as a whole, but, you know, especially in golf, they, they don't let other Arnold golfers Palmer get the, they don't, they don't let other golfers get the advantage on them because they know, you know, they know the value of, you know, having your spine aligned and everything, uh, your body working as, as efficiently as it can. So it's, it's in, invaluable. So they don't like to give other golfers that, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I go golfing, I tell everyone, look, unless there's another chiropractor, I'm not adjusting anybody till after we're done. That's good thinking. That's okay, because it's just not fair. It's right. just absolutely not fair. Right. We're talking like, you know, the difference of at least 10, you know, there's a, about a 10 difference every time I do adjust them. They all get 10 less. Oh, and I strokes. get 10 yeah. strokes. Yeah. They're, they're 10 less than me. I'm like, yeah. that isn't fair. <laughs> it's just not fair. So the first couple yeah. of years I was doing it, I said, it's just, this isn't fair. Not fair. Yeah. It'd be interesting to do like a, a scientific test on something like that. To a see, study, to, for, you to, know, to, to with really and without. See, yeah, to see how it, I know, uh, I've, you know, I've been in conversation with other uh, golf professionals just this spring, and we talked about um, the value of, of, of just getting 
uh, some of the students in shape, get, uh, changing their, their, their shape, their, their, uh, their strength and their flexibility, and how that Im improved their ability to swing the club efficiently and, and, and just made their games a lot better just by doing that. And it, it'd be the same way, you know, with, uh, with chiropractics, you know, getting, you know, getting them um, their spines aligned and everything uh, flowing correctly, it, it would do the same thing. It would help their games. I imagine it's critical. That would be a cool study. You know, pre and post, you know, before, you know, I guess you could do one day you have the same golfers, then you, you, know, you adjust this half, and then the next time you adjust that half, we keep track of who's winning and who's not. That, that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It wouldn't be a blind study, though. You couldn't do that because you'd know if you're getting adjusted or not. Well, yeah. You can't do a blind study <laughs> you on can't that do a blind one, study, but you right. could do, you know, just a. a you know, test on it anyway. It I be... know that when I get adjusted, I do better. I have more focus. One of the things is about mental clarity and focus. You know, I don't play professionally. I just, I just go out to have fun. But still, better focus means better drives, means better short game, and yeah, I end up doing much better. And when I don't, or when I go and try to play and I'm tired, that's when I do the more damage to myself, and usually the posture's wrong, and that's when that's the people that we see, the people that don't protect their back the way they need to. So especially even if you're walking on the golf course. See, Tom and I walk a lot with a lot of different places that we go. Um, you have to make sure that you're in alignment because your hips aren't going to be able to go up and down all those slopes and all those different things. So being in shape is, is definitely important. So, you know, just like we talk about nutrition with chiropractic, they have to talk about nutrition with golf just as much and all the other sports as well. So. It's all important, keeping hydrated the whole time, those kind of things. So let's talk about getting that ball out of the cup. Because <laughs> that's a lot of bending and twisting in itself. And I, I just went golfing. And one guy had a little thing. He, he just, he had it right on his little putter, a little thing that was, and it would just. Suction cups like a suction out of the cup. cup, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I see that. It's, it's, in, it's important to kind of be, you know, try to keep your back fairly straight as, as you're getting it out because you are, you know, you do have to get, get lower, you know, you have to, there has to be some bending, but if you can try to use your, your legs and, and, and bend down using your, your knees instead of uh, just, just, you know, bending your back over, it's going to be better for your, for your back in the long run. And um, I know uh, with, uh, with Dr. Slusher here, she uses, uh, we have a new de new device when she gets the ball out she you know that she uses this kind of a, a neat thing it's really designed to get the ball out of the water but it works perfectly for getting out of the hole too and she uses that uh, when she when she makes those long putts she just she skips up there and and uh, mm -hmm. gets it out of the hole instead of having to bend over and have well, to worry I had about a back injury, in, the injury back. in January and you know there's a big difference between bending over and bending straight over and picking up the ball out of the cup you know, um, and the average person's obviously doing 18 holes more than just nine, but, you know, doing that a whole bunch of times that you're having to do that for versus you're using some kind of, you know, maneuver where it's going to do that for you and take that away. But I hardly ever see people squatting down to get their ball out of the cup. Most people are bending straight over. That's what they do. So, and you think about... Um, you know how much gravity so they're bending is and in twisting on, what they do and they're it. bending and twisting you know i've seen some people kick their back leg out a little bit to get a little bit better that's balance that's the way i do it so if i'm not squatting I, I kick my leg yeah out. yeah to give me a so. you know my back at least most of my back straight that way yeah and you don't necessarily feel it in the first five six holes that you do it in but when you're in that last on the back end of the 18 that you're doing you know you're going to start feeling it if you're going to just keep bending over like that Think about somebody who works in a job where they're just bending over like that all day long. So it makes a difference. So so they have things that help to make it a little bit more ergonomic for you. So there's there's things like that where they're on long sticks or, like you said, on the end of somebody's putter where they can just flip it over. My father-in-law has that, just flips it over and can reach down in there and get it, you know, that way. So that way you don't have to bend over as much. But if you do have to bend, you should always try to bend at the knees and squat down first protect your back so fantastic well any last words we want to talk about uh, for well I'd, I just want to mention that um, I for myself I get adjusted after I play as well 
you know, I, I, you know, I often get adjusted before to so the body's working efficiently, but afterwards it's it's, a, it's real important to get adjusted too because while you're playing, you're out there for 18 holes and and you know taking a number of of full swings at it, um, things get misaligned and and so you just get adjusted and everything's everything's back good again afterwards. So now something I do when I go golfing, I talk to the the pro at the at the club and. Let him know I'm a chiropractor, and if he wants my services, I would love to trade a quick lesson for a quick adjustment. And uh, I get a lot of free lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so it works out really great. Because, you know, usually these guys could always use an extra, you know, and it, it's pretty funny. I've had him down on the ground, too, where the other, the, the security came, you know, like, what are you doing to our program? <laughs> I got him tackled on the ground, I'm getting his hips on the grass. <laughs> hey, when you don't have a table on hand, grass works really good. The grass worked perfect for me. <laughs> yes. and, uh, oh, man. So, yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, I know for me, I mean, I love jacuzzing afterwards, but getting adjusted is like, oh, my God, it's like saves me. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, yep. So, I think that's great advice. They were trying to work something with the uh, Michigan uh, Association of Chiropractors with the Pro uh, AM Tour thing. We're working on that, so that'd be nice to have a chiropractor at each each one of these events. You know, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. The, I was just going to say, you know, definitely the golf professional at each club is viewed as, you know, not just an expert in golf swing, but an expert in, in fitness and the and the uh, members' health and and everything, and and so. The the golf professionals they a lot of times they they're they're connected with all all these different people and so um, they're they're good people to know about chiropractic and how it can help and and uh, so I I um you know I I know of at least one other uh, golf professional that that uh, he's married to a chiropractor as well and um, you know we you know What's we we, that? we both know, <laughs> we both we both know the value and and um, and so I, I think it it would it would be a, a good relationship to to uh, for you know to educate all the other golf professionals that aren't married to chiropractors of of the value and and uh, how important it is. Yeah, I think it's great. Okay, so now we're going back uh, to uh, exercise, and it'll also be great for. The main thing is getting your core developed enough to where it can withstand all these things we do to it, like golf and boating and bowling and tennis. And, and uh, so we see like all these different people come in in the summertime. And that's what this whole show has been about is, you know, the summertime different things that are out there. And uh, although we talked about philosophy, which led into this and, uh, Unbelievable! If 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 we could do just a little bit more on the preventative end of this thing, how much trouble we could prevent? You know, just well. And we're the, about to show the exercises, and that will show that a little bit of time can go a long way, and how it can help us with that. And some people think, yeah, it takes hours. No, no. it takes five minutes, ten minutes, right. ten minutes, and mm -hmm. do a little bit of extra, and it saves you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see you back in a few minutes with uh, exercises. I'm Dr. Tony Rodnick, and with me today is, Dr. is Tom Slusher, PGA professional golfer, and he's going to tell us some golf stretches and, and postures. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Rodnick. We're going to start out today, and uh, we talked earlier in the show about uh, how we can prevent injury. We talked about warming up, and we also talked about being in the correct posture. Um, we're going to work on our, our golf posture here. Now, Dr. Ronick is not an avid golfer, but she she uh, she played golf in college or took a class in college, so she she has a little bit of experience. But we're gonna we're gonna go over golf posture and show you how that that uh, can be helpful for the health of your spine. Okay, and what we want to do is uh, basically you want to go about uh, shoulder width apart with your feet, okay, standing straight up. Okay, now we're going to flex our knees a little bit. Okay, just flex the knees a little bit. And now what we want to do, we're pretending we have a club in our hand, and we're going to bend from the tailbone until we're over to where the end of our club would touch the ground. Okay, so it's going to look uh, something like this. 
Okay, here's gonna be posture. You can see how my back is fairly straight. My, my uh, neck stays pretty much in line with my spine. I don't wanna bury my, my, uh, my neck down. I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep it in line with my spine. That way it gives me room where I can turn my body, turn my shoulder back underneath my chin. Okay, another thing you're gonna notice, I don't want, I don't uh, reach my arms way out away from my body and I don't have them too far in either. They hang pretty much straight down from my shoulders and that's also gonna help, help me so I, I keep uh, everything moving efficiently. Okay, so let's, let's check uh, Dr. Ronick out here. Okay, you can see how she has her knees flexed. Okay, she has, now she has heels on so it's a little bit harder to play golf in heels but it can be done, okay. <laughs> Okay, come a little bit narrower, Dr. Ronick, a little bit narrower. Okay, she's, her knees are flexed. Okay, now right now she's sitting a little bit too far back and it's getting her, her, uh, her spine a little too straight up. So what she's gonna wanna do is she's gonna feel like, you wanna feel like uh, you're standing just a little taller and feel like the weight goes to the balls of your feet. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead, and pretend like you got a club there. Okay, feel just a little, feel it just a little taller. Relax arms here. Feel a taller, there we go, okay. Now the balls, the weight will be on the balls of her feet. Now she's ready to make a good turn, okay. She'll turn her shoulder underneath her chin, perfect, okay. And be able to move back and through, okay. So that's the proper posture. You can see how her, now her, uh, her uh, spine is aligned so she can turn back and through. It's not bent, so we're not putting undue stress on, on the spine. And it's allow, allowing it to move efficiently so I'm back and through. Bending at the hips, not at the not in the spine, not yeah. in the lumbar. Yeah, I tell most of my students, I tell I tell them bend at the tailbone because if I just tell them to bend over, they bend this way and they get that big curve in, the, in their in their back and their spine. Okay, so usually if I tell them bend, you know, bend from the tailbone, then they tend to keep you know more their their spine, their back more upright. And okay. that's that's what I, and that's that's a you know what I typically tell them in order to, um, not only does it help the health of their, of their back and spine, but it helps them to swing more efficiently. Okay. Okay. And then uh, uh, next, let's, let's do a couple warm ups that, that, um, that I would do uh, before I golf. Okay, one, one really good one is uh, the stretch out uh, like, like the arms. And, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll take one arm like this and kind of put it here and just take the hand and just kind of pull, pull back right here. And you do that, and you'll feel like a stretch yeah, feel down, right down here in the uh, in the tricep area. Okay, and that's that's a great stretch. And you do that for uh, you know a couple seconds, and then you can move to the other side. And you can kind of stretch out up in here. Okay. Um, another thing I I typically do uh, when I uh, go out to play is I will hit uh, uh, short irons first, or short clubs like a like a wedge or a sand wedge, and hit a number of shots with that, just hitting shots maybe half speed to 75% speed just to get the body warm, to warm up, yeah. just to get it warmed up so it's getting used to the motion it's uh, you know gen gently warming it up so I, I'm you know getting ready for the, the bigger swings then you know, as you work through it by the end of your, your warm-up practice you can start hitting you know fuller shots and, and some drivers but it's uh, I, I always find it beneficial to start out with uh, some shorter clubs and and get the body you know acclimated to the the uh, the motion that it's going to be made. So when you're warming up, are you are you not going back as far? Are you taking your a, a shorter swing? Yeah. Well, well, with the wedges, you're it's a shorter club anyway, so you're you're typically not swinging it back as far. You're not making it as, as big. And then a, you're bending further turn. down because it's a shorter club. Um, yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, it's probably a little bit because it's shorter. You'll you'll be a little bit more over, but it's. And again, you want it from the tailbone. You don't want to. Correct. Okay, because it's shorter, so you're bending further. Correct. Okay. Yep. Always from the tailbone, not not the back. You don't want that big big curve, curve. in your back. You don't want to get that big curve. And uh, so, and other other things I might do when I'm warming, I might I might uh, warm stretch my legs. Okay, do like a hurdler stretch where you're down on the ground and and stretching out the uh, you know their, your thigh, your hamstring, and uh, and uh, just Lunge, doing that, but, lunges be good. Um, yeah, yeah. Anything to get you know to get to your legs so that they have a little bit of uh, you know just warm so they're they're not muscles. going just yeah. from stiff, not yeah. from cold. Just warm it, warm them up a little bit. Uh, those are all good things to do. And uh, you know, then you know, when you know, once you're you're warmed up, you should be should be good to go. Um, you know what? You want to 
go to the next exercise. Okay, or? we can go back to the um, posture exercises we usually show the Straighten Up America, and we'll add some extra Straighten Up America. The first three are the posture pod. We're going to stand with our feet shoulder width apart. Tighten your core, focus on your core, and as you breathe in, take a deep breath in, bring your arms up, tip your head back, and hold it. And there goes the hat, and then breathe out. Let's do it again. And these are just good posture exercises. When you reach up, stretch, open up the joints, and breathe out. And we're going to do these two or three times. And we're going to do it two or three times a day. The first three are called spinal hygiene. And breathe out. The second one, we have the same thing, feet shoulder width apart, tighten the core, and you bring your arms up and make backward circles with your shoulders. And while you're doing that, we're focusing on the space between our shoulder blades. We're tightening those muscles, because in this day and age, we're all texting, we're hunched over, we're tightening these muscles and stretching those, so we want to work on tightening those muscles. And then we can tip to the side. And in chiropractic, we want everything symmetrical, so unless you have a spine that tips one way, you want to always do both sides. And the third one, we have, you want to clasp your hands together, put it behind your head, but we're not pushing with our hands, we're pushing with our head. As you take a deep breath in, push your head back. And this, again, is because we're doing all this texting, we're bending our neck forward, we're tightening the front, and, we're, and we're, the back muscles are getting stretched and weakened. So then relax, take a deep breath in, do it again. Another way of doing this might be when you're in the car. If you stop at a red light, push your head against the headrest. That way you're not tempted to tip your head up, but just doing the straight back motion, working the back muscles, the neck muscles in the back of your neck. And then I thought we would do some other Straighten Up America exercises today. Um, let's try it with um, one's called Picking Apples. You just want to twist and reach. Reach up and twist. Another one to get motion into the spine, we call it throwing water. You just kind of gently throw the water, twisting both directions. One of my favorites is just hanging. You just kind of hang down, let it all hang. And then there's the, the ones that great your path. So bottom line is we want to warm up before we do any activity, especially activities where we're using our bodies. Um, we want to keep everything symmetrical. Again, golf is a one-sided activity, so you also want to stretch the other way. Um, warm up, take care of yourself. Be aware of your posture in all activities. And have a great summer. Thanks for joining us at Ask the Chiropractor. Thank you. That was yeah. great. Good job.